Hello and welcome to another episode of the Golden Hour Podcast, and we are here today with the one, the only, incredible Kai W. Thank you, Kai, for joining Hi. us today, Hi. all the way from London. Yes, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry your first choice couldn't be on the sh- on the show today, so... Uh... You know, I'm always here to fill in. So this week has been a crazy week for camera news. The camera that I'm most excited about is the illustrious Leica Q2. That, or no, the Leica Q3. <laughs> Q2, I was like, <laughs> you're about three years too late for that. <laughs> no, that was this is yeah. this is what you texted me about, just, no, wasn't it? This is why you got in contact with me. You said, <laughs> "Hey, what's the Q- Q3 like?" Yes, and do you have it? No, I sent it back today. Do you mm. not want me on the show now? Is that why you? Is that why you want to be on the show? <laughs> you're, not, you're not as desirable now, yet. Darn, no, no, man. no. You've you've had hands on time with it, and uh, you're a Leica fan like myself. You've got a lot of Leica experience. You're like a Leica guy, and um, uh, so we want to yeah. talk all about the nerdy new stuff. Tell us about it, Kai. What's uh, what's the Leica Q3? What is it? High resolution, uh, you know, sixty megapixels. 8K, uh, 15 FPS, and finally, phase detection autofocus, which looks very much like Panasonic's uh, system because it's got those little boxes that looks... I watched your video, and it it is the same. I mean, I, it, they're not claiming it, right? Is, what, is that the truth? I mean, I didn't ask them. I, I did, they didn't say it in their little uh, presentation, but as soon as I got it, I thought, okay, they're not even trying to hide it with some new little graphics, and uh, it's just... Boom, there you are. It's Panasonic. It's quite obvious it's Panasonic. They didn't specifically say it's from Panasonic, but uh, who knows? That's fine. You know, the S5 II is it's all right. It's all right. It's not top-level autofocusing, but it's fine, isn't it? I, I think they they must have put that in because that's the only auto uh, phase detection autofocus they've got in their lineup. Yeah, unless we're unless we're seeing into the future a little bit here with this camera and we may maybe see yeah. this sensor in an S2R or an s one R Mark II or whatever they're going to call it. Yeah, I mean it's possible, isn't it? Because maybe maybe Leica paid them a bit more money, um, but also Panasonic don't have 8K in any of the hybrid camera lineup. Um, not yet. Yeah, it, not it's yet. not like yeah. it's We're just still waiting on that S2H or whatever. Yeah. Yep. So coming tomorrow is, <laughs> or by the time this comes out, yeah, it's already, <laughs> already announced. The thing that has been the most exciting thing with this Leica camera is that I, when you really think about all the specs and all the things that they've done with it, it really kind of has everything that people have kind of dreamed about in a tiny little point and shoot camera. Uh, it's not even yeah. really tiny, but it's a, you know, 28 millimeter prime Summa Lux, uh, is it F1.7? One seven, yeah, yeah, sixty megapixels. So it's the same sensor size as the M11, which um, many people have, you know, done plenty of reviews on, and it's a fantastic sensor and great color. But we're not here to necessarily talk about stills, even though I know it's a stills camera. But yeah. uh, what's really crazy to me is that this thing is able to record eight K at ten bit. I was yeah. not expecting that, and then also it has the ability to shoot ProRes. Can you tell us about? the video features of the Leica Q, which is insane to even be saying that. Well, it's kind of mind-blowing, isn't it? Because, I mean, as, as you said, it's... Um, well, I mean, I mean, I think everybody was was not expecting that. Uh, you know, Leica very much about stills, uh, even though they've had a couple of cameras that, uh, you know, video-focused. I wouldn't say they, that they were the number one choice for a lot of video shooters, but th- this could be a great... You know, a carry around camera. It's got. Uh, I don't think it will be a camera that's going to be used primarily. Uh, you know, your first camera, but just for getting a little kind of um, quick, quick video where, when you're not taking your your cine camera. It's uh, an, it's a neat, neat little camera. Uh, yeah, it is pretty cool. But I mean, can we just uh, quickly address? You're like, yeah, it, it's everything you'd want in a little compact camera, but it's also six thousand dollars. Now I know it's a Leica, but it's like. It's it's six grand. I mean, wouldn't you? Um, one of the things that surprised me with the Leica when I look at it, and every time I look at a digital Leica, is that I'm surprised it's not better. Actually, usually I'm surprised. I'm like, oh, I would think the electronic EVF would be um, higher resolution, or the the screen would be a higher resolution, or that it would have more features, or the rolling shutter wouldn't be so bad, or you know, X Y Z X Y Z X Y Z all the way up. Let's face it, like the SL range, it is more like just a Panasonic which has uh, been rebadged um the SL looks good 
you know, SL2, SL2S, they look great, but they don't look very good value when you compare it to, say, a Panasonic hybrid camera. And then there's the Leica M, which is is just unique. So, okay, what what's the choice? You, you can buy a Leica M or you can not buy a Leica M. So you just take it or leave it with the price or you buy a second-hand one. So this, I don't think it's too bad. I mean, I'm saying this, I don't have it here. Sorry, it's, sorry to tease, but I don't have it here. It's not too bad when you think about it. I mean, it, even Dave was saying it's it's not too bad, bad when you think about it. It's got a lens built in. It's got a Leica lens built in. A Summilux as well. So if you break it down in terms of the price, if you look at, say, an A7R5, how much does that thing cost? I, I don't know about over there, but it's like four grand here. It's probably similar over there, isn't it? Four grand, four thousand, four thousand pounds. And then you add a lens, say another thousand pounds. And that is kind of in uh, Q3 territory already. So I, I think it's not too bad when you think about it. Yeah, I mean, it's high resolution. It's got 8K. It's got a lot of features now. I think maybe before the Q2, it would seem like a bit of a, you know, a rich man's toy. But now I think it's it's got, it's actually backed up with good features that are really, you could say, cutting edge. Tell us some of those cutting edge features, some of the things that stand out to you, along with obviously the video that we just mentioned. I mean, I think just being a point and shoot camera there's not much competition and to have okay when you when i say cutting edge it's not like oh i've never not seen this feature before okay the phase detection isn't going to be the best phase detection autofocus but it's good autofocus in a point and shoot and it just makes it great for getting snapshots and just 8k video i mean that's pretty nuts uh, not many cameras have that. And one of the things that th- there's, t- there's two or three things about it too, that I wasn't really expecting. One is the flip out screen that we now have on a yeah. model. We've never seen that before. That's great. It's not a selfie screen, but it's the old kind of traditional flip out screen yeah. uh, that we've seen on like, it's a yeah. tilt screen. Til- I tilty dot flippy. I think that's the right move. If you're going to pick one yeah. or the other for this camera, that's the right type for this because then you can do that great kind of shooting from the hip style of yes. shooting like a roloflex or something right like I, I don't know it's just these days everybody wants a vlogging screen they just want just want oh, oh does it have a vlogging it, it doesn't have a vlogging screen oh no my world is my world is caved in i can't i can't shoot videos of my own face and i think people just expect it now and then people have been putting these kind of tilty flippy screens on so now this looks rudimentary that you know it just does that or that, that or that, but it's actually a really good when you when you're taking stills. You don't when you want to do low down. You don't want to be having that out, do you? You don't want to have it out to the side, and mm-hmm. it's just not. It's not. It doesn't feel very nice for for shooting stills. The people who are buying a uh, Leica camera aren't probably vlogging, so I don't think they had to worry about that. The tilt screen is probably. Per- yeah, yeah. They have their butler to take videos of them. They're like Reginald. Please take me a photo. They've also done something that I've never seen any company do. Correct me if I'm wrong, Kai, but with the uh, optional hand grip, which adds a, a you know a nice little grip to it, it also actually has wireless charging built into it. So hmm. there's little connection points on the hand grip that then go into the the bottom of the camera, and then they sell you know a very nice uh, leather you know beautiful Leica version of this. It's like a little stand that you could just set on your nightstand or whatever and you just place the leica down has, on the little has nightstands on our nightstands a thing i have a night yeah yeah pretty yeah. common oh shit sorry this is this is some american you don't thing, isn't it what is a nightstand do you do you have furniture in london Wait, I, where I, do you where do you keep your gun <laughs> i we, we, we we're very zen in london we 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 kind of just do everything on the floor what the fuck is a nightstand you know like a little side table wait what do you just call it side table it's the same same amount of syllables. Okay. Yeah. So I've just dis dis uh, the whole of America who calls that nightstand, I don't know. Kai, can you give me some clarification on the wireless charging? Will it also work with just any normal kind of chi charger if you just kinda like yeah. balance it on yeah. to the, the Yeah, thing? it does. It's, okay, it, so that means you could yeah. maybe even put like a magnetic MagSafe ring on the bottom and <laughs> use yeah, a MagSafe I, I uh, guess so. yeah. charger puck. Yeah, it's just a bog standard yeah. wireless charger. I think that's a cool it? idea. It is. I. I mean, I. I kind of don't know why nobody else is not thought about that. 
It's just a it's a neat little feature. Well, it's probably yeah. prop up in a lot of cameras coming forward, you know. It's the perfect idea for this type of camera because it, it is one of those like, oh, I'm about to go to the park with my family. Let me just grab the camera. And it could just be sitting there on your desk. You just pick it up. It's fully charged. When you're done, you place it down and it charges up again. You never have to take the battery out. It's, it's a really cool idea. I like it. I mean, wireless charging has been around for some time now. I, it's just, why, why are they so slow? I, I think camera manufacturers are, are quite slow to be with the trend of things. Now we're getting shitloads of mm-hmm. vlogging cameras. People have been vlogging. People have been wanting vlogging cameras and vlogging with other cameras for years. And now, oh, we've got a vlogging camera. We've got a vlogging camera. It's got a good mic on it. Oh, and finally, Sony's got a wider lens. Well, why didn't they do it years ago when they first yeah. released the ZV-1? They're very slow. Well, they got a wider lens, but now they don't have stabilization. Yeah, well, hey, we're get we're getting ahead of ourselves. Whoops. We will definitely get into yeah. that topic Sorry. for sure. The ZV one Mark II. No, no, it's all good. Sorry, Dave. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's. I, I think. I mean, the truth is, is it probably takes. I mean, w- here we are, just kind of complaining about things, but it's got to take these engineers a couple of years to build the camera, right? I mean, <laughs> that's probably uh, what it is. Just yeah, now or, or, up. or just rehouse some electronics into a different case um yeah you know board mm-hmm. meetings yeah. things like that oh what should, what should we do uh yeah uh, two years later uh, let's do it it would be cool though if wireless charging came to other cameras and if you had like a pelican case that had like battery like yeah. you, know, you could yes. just set all your stuff in there and then when you get to wherever you're going everything's fully charged and you don't have to worry about it that would be cool oh, no, you have to trademark that Although now it's in public domain, domain yeah, oh. because uh, you've just mentioned that. Um, we can cut so that. We can cut that. That's cut mine. <laughs> hey, guys, that's mine. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, that, that's what makes the DJI mic so great is the little, you know, AirPods case that they come in. It's it's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, okay, they, they stole the uh, the AirPod idea, but, um, they you know, they put it into the realm of uh, photo geeks. I love that you just have it sitting there. I have a that lot of perfect shit on my table. timing on that. It's, uh, um, it's, <laughs> it's just because I've got a very messy table at the minute, it's, and I've got everything ready apart from the Q3. Sorry, <laughs> and the ZB1 too. Mm. <laughs> so with the Q- Q3, you've had a you've had some experience with the Q2, and obviously mm. the Q1 as well. Yeah. several years ago. How is the EVF experience using this newer EVF? Does it does it feel kind of in line with with what you're used to with modern uh, EVF? Or is it is it? It's good. It's not big, as good as a Sony. I mean, what are your thoughts? Um, I was a little bit surprised that you know when you press the shutter button, it does kind of stutter just a very brief moment. Um, I can't remember if I edited that into the video, hmm. but um, I did mention it. It, it kind of very brief stutter. Otherwise, it's it's as good hmm. as. Um, you know, any of that I've used before. It's not the highest resolution. That's high resolution EVFs, but uh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's good. It's not, it's not, oh, what, like I've put some cheap shit in it. Um, yeah, it's definitely good. <laughs> and the handling is pretty much the same. It's essentially the same body. I think they added an extra custom yeah. button to it, but um, other than the screen well, and the ports on the side, um, it's the same, right? Oh, I mean, they put the buttons. It's, it's a very small thing, but it's, it's a big thing for Likers. They've moved buttons. They've moved the buttons from the left side to the right side. So, you know, you can just do the menus and stuff like that all with one hand instead of two hands. Uh, also, partially that's because they've got a tilt screen on that nice. side now. But, yeah, one-handed operation. You were you were talking about how you don't like the thumbs-up uh, hot shoe mount and all that but the, they've got like three different colors now they've got like a silver a bronze and a black i, I don't i don't know why you'd want to mismatch your colors like that but that's you know to each their own i guess <laughs> yeah black camera with a, a bronze thumbs up grip or silver you know i i I always thought it's a bit weird to to buy a, a digital camera then you you want something to feel like a film camera. It's just like a rewind, the, the film advance lever. You, you can rest your thumb on it. No, it's, it's just the way it is. If, why don't they design the grip a bit better on the camera then instead of adding something on? It's, just, it's an add-on accessory that wasn't <laughs> meant to be in the first place. So either the camera is designed badly or, you know, you, you, just, you, just, you just have to accept it. I, I don't understand why you need to, to 
use a hot shoe to put a little metal piece of metal just to rest your thumb on it. <laughs> now, one of the things that a lot of people might criticize, especially the video people, is the fact that there's no mic input jack. We do now have an HDMI out, which is new for this model. Is there any confirmation on that USB-C port eventually kind of turning yeah, into uh, maybe an adapter that you could get use a little dongle or something? Yeah, I've 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 been told about the dongle. Dongles are good. They've they've the the Hands on with a dongle right now. Um, getting ready with a dongle action. And mm. a future firmware update. <laughs> something like that. They're going to get whip out the, the uh, German okay. dongles. This is, you, I bet you're wishing you've got Philip Bloom on there, don't you? We can just cut, <laughs> we can just cut that bit out. Let's just, uh, let me just say, let, let, let this, let's film another take. Yes, they have got an adapter coming out, apparently, <laughs> uh, with a firmware good, update. Good, good. Wonderful. The The use of the dongle doesn't feel very Leica, does it? Doesn't... No, it's very Leica. They did it with the original SL. Yeah, I, well, what I mean by that is that it just doesn't feel premium and Leica is premium. It's the Apple method. You know, you only have a couple of ports and you got to use a bunch of dongles. And the, those few ports are minimal and simple and clean. I guess. It keeps the camera clean. I'd kill the HDMI over uh, 3.5. No. I mean, if Apple don't want to have a, a headphone port, and if Apple like to do the dongle, then why not Leica? I'd love to see a red dot dongle. <laughs> My question is, when are we going to see the Leica Q3 monochrome? Because I want some monochrome 8K action is what I want. But do you? Do you really want to see a monochrome? I mean, do you want one? I, I want a Leica Q3. I don't want a monochrome, no. I like the idea of it. If I if I had unlimited money, sure. But yeah, I, I'm I sure they're gonna they come out with one because you know you know like a products they they kind of come out with the main product and then they have the Lenny Kravitz edition. Then they have the um, you know lots of whatever celebrities who have rubbed rubbed the paint off edition, and then they have uh, a Safari edition, and then lots of special editions. Then they have the monochrome, and then they have a camera with no buttons on it or something like that. Yeah, and and then they have the <laughs> next generation of of camera. So of course they can have the monochrome because <laughs> yeah. in the Leica world, it's that that's a thing. It's like oh, oh yeah, I, I I still shoot monochrome. I I I want only strictly monochrome. Uh, it would be pretty cool to say see AK yeah. monochrome only, um, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I. Yeah, Red made a monochrome camera for a period of time, and uh, I think David Fincher shot the um, Justin Timberlake uh, music video on it. One, one of them. So that's all I know about it. But well, it, it shows you get they're a in a good position. Ranch. They're in a good position when they can just say, you know what, screw it, we're just going to release a monochrome edition. Apart from Pentax, <laughs> I don't know what uh, Pentax are releasing <laughs> and, a monochrome. And charge more money for it. Um, uh, the Pentax K3 monochrome? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> I don't know. It's some K something. Oh, wow. I, I, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Dude, that's awesome. Uh, y yeah. I want to pick yeah. one of those up. That'd be, that'd be fun. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be on sale very soon. Like a heavy, heavy discount. If they did, if they did a, a Ryko GR3 monochrome. You're going to get blasted somebody, for calling it Ryko again. <laughs> Rico. <laughs> How do you is say right? it? Is it Rico? Is it Ryko? Rico. Uh, it could be Ryko. I, uh, who knows? In, in Japan, maybe it is Ryko. And then Dave is like a visionary for, for calling it Ryko. But, mm. <laughs> I don't know. Most people call it Rico. So just to recap, we... And by the way, this it's the same lens, right? They didn't give you any confirmation that they've redesigned no, lens. the lens in no. any way. It's the same... Same okay. lens. It is a pretty lens. And I've heard... I've heard people talk too that it they call it a twenty eight, but it kind of feels more like a twenty four. What what are your thoughts on that? Does it feel a little wider than? I think it's a little wider. It is a little wider, and, and I think that's because it's got a bit of distortion, um, you know, to correct it. And do you know if the video? Um, do they apply the corrections in the video to whatever that lens is? The you know if there's any, are they doing any in camera adjustments yeah, point, to fix actually. any of those issues that you're talking about? That was a good point. <laughs> they apply it in the photos, but I'm just curious if they're applying any correction in video. But I guess I'll have to do a test. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just 
just watch my video. There's a there's a there's a video there's a video which which is at twenty eight millimeters and there's lots of lines. So uh, just check that out. Yeah. So just to recap, we're looking at six thousand dollars, which is definitely more expensive than it should be, but it's a Leica. But you know, when you kind of think about it, it's high resolution. It's small. It's doing eight K recording and it has great photo modes, high resolution EVF, wireless charging. It looks sexy around your neck. I mean, what else do you want? You know, it's a great. I think that's it's where available. most of the cost comes from. That last one <laughs> to to look. Sexy. I disagree. I think when you think about, I think there is value in it. Um, again, if you are just comparing it to a Sony camera, take a twenty eight millimeter or roughly equivalent. Let's just say the twenty four one four. That ca- that lens costs what fifteen hundred to two thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Pair that with a four thousand dollar body. Boom. There you go. Six thousand dollars roughly. And it's ugly, big, and it has a Sony badge on it. So um, instead of a red dot, <laughs> right. exactly, it doesn't look sexy. Um, it's got. It's not going to make y- yourself and other people jizz in their pants just looking at it. Plus, there's also there's really nothing to compare it to. There's no other small single lens, you know, point and shoot in, in this class. There's nothing that exists. I, I think the next Fujifilm 100V will probably be 40 megapixels. They'll probably stick the XT5 sensor in it with the same processor and that body style. Although it'll be 35 millimeter instead of 28, which the 28 is nice, but that'll probably compete with it pretty heavy. But will it look sexy around your neck? Yeah, the X100 is wildly popular, but I think if if any, I I would argue that there's Fuji people that if they were given the option um, and money was no object, it, this or that, they would pick the Leica. Well, let's face it, the Fuji X100 is sort of riding on the wave of the whole Leica M style. It's you're buying that because the Leica M is a bit too expensive, but you you want a piece of that action. So I can't afford the M. I'll just buy a Fuji film. So when you buy the Fuji film. You're probably at some point going to buy Leica. So you just buy Leica in the first place. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting theory. <laughs> well, the, I mean, the, the truth is, is there are people who don't even know what a Leica M is and they don't know the heritage of the M line. And so when they look at the Fuji, they think, oh, that looks like a really pretty vintage camera. But the reason they say that is because it's taking styling cues from Leica, which, you know, they created the M in the 19, you know, 20s but the the m3 in particular and the m2 in the 60s right but so yeah yeah i mean okay maybe it doesn't look exactly like a like m i mean you it could look like any other range finder camera but i I, what what other cameras are are still what other range finder digital range finder cameras still exist in a moment so uh, you know it's kind of um because of that niche popularity um, I'm curious to see if these will even be in stock. Like, I mean, you could pre-order them now, but, you know, Fuji kind of notoriously has had a real struggle keeping their cameras in stock, especially the X100 series. So, yeah, you know, I hope so, Leica has prepared for all the people that are going to order this thing. Well, you know, they're a luxury brand, aren't they? So maybe they're going to kind of hold back the supply just like Rolex watches. So you can't, you want it? You can't have it. And then it will just dry up prices, yeah. up prices, because it seems like everybody, all the influencers or all the the popular reviewers, are saying yeah, it's great, it's great, it's the camera that I wanted. Uh, I saw Jordan Drake said something about you know he loves it. Um, so it's yeah, people. It seems like there's a lot of uh, positive words about it. Well, let me ask you, Kai, uh, definitively, do you like it? Yeah. Well, let me ask you, are you going to buy it? Am I going to buy it? I'd have to sell uh, my C70 to afford it. <laughs> uh, screw the 70, C70. Uh, you don't need it anyways. Exactly. You can shoot 8K. Yeah, I mean, it's the this is the coolest cue that's ever come out. I mean, you know, the, it's, it's awesome that they kind of just put everything in it. And I think Leica knows now how popular this is over the last couple of years, especially during COVID. Um, like, I remember the Q2 came out before COVID, and then COVID happened and there's just been this huge resurgence in um, this style of camera with the X100 and obviously the Q2 as well and the the Ricoh GR3. Um, so all these tiny little point and shoot cameras that are much better than your phone, they've just kind of gone crazy on social media. So I think Leica knowing that just kind of did a lot of work obviously and, and made this thing really unique and 
has a lot of features. So yeah, I mean, going back to, to me. something we were saying earlier about uh, you know point and shoots. There's there's just no. I mean, before Sony had a full frame point and shoot, and for some reason, okay, maybe it wasn't that popular, but Sony would probably. I would have thought Sony would still continue it. The R R one X is it R one X R X one? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, R- which is which I thought was great. Yeah. It's probably even smaller than the Q, and um, it is. Yeah, it's, it's actually very small. Camera. I just wish they'd yeah. carried it on. It'd probably be more, more success, successful than the the Q three. Yeah, if they if they had the um, all the Sony stuff, you know, that <laughs> just keep the same lens that was in the R X one or whatever it's called, that thirty five millimeter uh zeiss although i guess in a way their their kind of relationship with zeiss has seemed to kind of slowly faded away yeah uh, now that they're doing their own gm lenses and I, stuff but well i mean faded away or they realized that okay we don't need you we're we're big boys we're <laughs> yeah. everybody wants to shoot a sony so screw you it doesn't matter whether we got a little mm-hmm. blue uh zeiss t asterisk nobody even knows what that is Let's let's make our own lenses because we can. <laughs> with Sony, we can just rule the world. We can make whatever we like. You know, fingers up to the world. We're gonna do it. We don't need you to hold our hands. That's a great segue into the Sony ZV One Two. Excellent. <laughs> See what I nice did? one. Great naming. I don't know if you have one of those uh, on you, but you did. You did. You also did a review on that this week. Tell us about the yeah. Sony ZV One Two. <sighs> you know, it's disappointing. It's disappointing, but it's good in a way. It's disappointing because you expect more from Sony. You expect it to, them to just completely change it because they can. They can do everything. It's just the same with a wider lens. And that's that's what we needed yeah. in the first yeah. place. <laughs> if they'd done it in the first place, then that would be fantastic. But it feels like I'm 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 pleased but yet angry because they could they sh- could have easily done this in the first place, but they're doing it now. But what can you do? And it's a bit more expensive. It's it's like nine hundred dollars, is it? Yeah, I mean, so yeah, I think it's it's right under a thousand dollars. And yeah. essentially, the ZV One Two is the same body, the same overall size, a lot of the same things, like that little built-in mic, the little fuzzy thing on top, mm-hmm. flip screen, all that stuff. Um, but they've now included a, was it an 18 millimeter to 50 millimeter yeah. equivalent built in zoom lens, which is really unique in the industry. Nikon did this several years ago. And then for some reason they abandoned that whole market. Um, but, uh, this is the first kind of an only, I think option on the market with this wide angle zoom, although I'm sure we'll see panasonic maybe do something like this too at some point maybe canon too i think canon has an opportunity with the g7x line to kind of do what sony has done with with their point and shoots but anyways they've also put the nd filter back in that was in the rx100 line that left with the zv1 so that's nice but they removed the stabilization the built-in stabilization that the zv1 has so just tell us about you know, your experience using it. Cause on paper you would think, Oh, this is the perfect vlogging camera, but then they removed the stabilization. So it, when you're actually hand holding it and it's not on a tripod, it's kind of wobbly. <laughs> so, well, I thought the ZV one was wobbly as shit anyway. So now, now you have to, I mean, you have to use active steady shot. It, it's a very Sony thing now. It's, it's like, if you want to get stable footage, you use active steady shot. Um, you know, the, the digital one. So yeah, it looks fine. It's, it's still, still not as good as some of the better stabilizations out there, but it, but it works. And you know, that, that's fine with me. I, I, I didn't like the 4k footage with a ZV one. It was just so shaky. It was, it's not very usable at all. And they're reusing the same sensor again as well. I was hoping for them to kind of put a new sensor in there, but it's the same sensor that we've seen now. I think going all the way back to the original RX105, which that sensor has been kind of in use <laughs> since 2016, which is um, a bit long in the tooth. <laughs> Curious. But also, who cares, I guess, right? Because it's a vlogging camera. <laughs> yeah. It's so... Kai, would you say, would you say like, because the camera's 900 bucks or whatever, and it has those goofy features with the no stabilization, all that stuff, at a certain point, because this is really being 
advertised towards vloggers, content creators, people probably making TikToks and stuff. But at a certain point, it's like, just use your phone, right? Like, like th is this really that much better than your phone? I mean, it is better, but like, is it worth paying $900 for when your phone is pretty solid? Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, totally is. For, for people who do TikTok, they probably don't really need another device because I think the problem with a lot of ma camera manufacturers, they still don't have a, f a really fantastic way of getting the footage from that device to your phone. It's still a bit clunky. Their software isn't all that good. And I think that's the main problem. And also, if the footage doesn't look that much better than your phone, then, then why bother? You can get good looking footage from your phone, uh, you know, with all that um, yeah, kind of HDR looking video, but you still have to do, you know, you still have to have the, f the screen facing away from you. Unless you use the front looking camera, front facing camera, which is just not as good, is it? So, mm. a camera like the ZV1 II still is useful. I mean, it's still nice to, to have a camera just dedicated for taking video instead of having your phone, and then the sound is perhaps not that good as the mic is a little bit better on the ZV1R. ZV uh, sorry, uh, ZV, what? what? I just made sure. up a product. Uh, the ZV1 II. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the ZV-1 too, yeah. Um, and then, but then this is also coming off of the heels of, obviously, the ZV-E1, which was the full-frame kind of variant of this Two, too many, two names so many. that sound very similar. It's it's really annoying, isn't it? ZV-1, ZV-1E, <laughs> yeah, let's jumble, jumble all the, the letters in a hat and num numbers. Uh, let's put, must put Z at the beginning. Boom, let, we'll just the create ZV a new ten. Yeah, Z, ZV, ZV, whatever. Who, who, who cares? Um, but ZV, yeah, ZV E1, that was the A7S in the vlogging body, wasn't it? I, yep. Yeah, I mean, yeah. what, you know, what the, were your thoughts on that one? It's all right. It's just all right. I mean, the thing that... Um, I, I mean, I think that was probably the best because underneath it all, it's a good camera. It's A7S III. And what's not to love about that? But the problem with a lot of the other vlogging cameras, not just Sony, is that these brands just have this really old vision of what a vlogger should be. I, I don't know what they think vloggers are like, but vloggers these days are shooting some really top quality videos. So something with like, oh, soft skin filters... And, you know, magical. I'm going to have, like, unicorn stickers on my vlogs and stuff like that. And, <laughs> you know, it's all about makeup and, and whatever. Um, they, they sort of have quite a simplistic view of what vloggers are like, almost. I, I still think they're they're targeting TikTokers. That's who they really want because that's a huge market that they're not tapped into very well. So the soft skin and all that stuff, that's what they're like, wow, look at these great features, even though your phone can do that. Uh, with cap cut or whatever miles better than the camera can. Um, but I think that's their sad attempt at breaking into that market. Cause you're right. The vloggers, like if you're talking about YouTube, I mean, what is a vlogger these days anyways, but th they're making pretty impressive stuff. So these cameras aren't even for them kind of already. I feel like the, the, the cameras that are being used for, so I, when we were at NAB, I actually met, um, one of Mr. Beast's shooters. He was at the Condor Blue booth and um, I introduced myself to him and I just started asking him a bunch of questions about the production. And they shoot on the R5C and I said, do you guys shoot in 1080p or 4K? And he said, we shoot all everything in 1080. <laughs> and then I said, okay, what profile do you, do you guys shoot on in log and 10 bit and then like color grade it? Or do you just bake it in? He's like, we bake it in. It's just standard with the sharpness down and the contrast down like one or two. And so like Mr. Beast is literally, you know, he yeah. is the biggest YouTuber on the planet and all the cameras can do what he needs at this point. Like for, for the most, even like Casey Neistat, you know, he switched to the a7s um, just to get 4k, but he's still shooting with like, just baked in. He doesn't color correct anything. Mm -hmm. You know, he's just shoot. He just switch it on to 4K, turn it on, hit record, set everything to auto, and just call it a day. So, having things like auto white balance 
ad, uh, ad, advancements, things that maybe make auto white balance better or auto exposure better and faster. You know, obviously autofocus improvements are always much needed and, and super exciting. Better stabilization. Those are things that real content creators need. If I could have better stabilization, if I could have better uh, auto uh, settings, maybe to just like be the uh, FX six variable auto ND, like that feature yeah. in a lot of these cameras would be super desirable. I, Absolutely, I, I think it's just. Are we still? But now, are we talking about a very small niche of high end content creators? I mean, it's no, you know, that's well, not a huge market. It's just but. a lot of pop. You know, some popular YouTubers who have who shoot, you know, some very nice vi- looking videos with nice looking B rolls, and, and of course, the people who follow them are going to want to do the same for their vlogs. And it's just become this thing that, oh, okay, oh, has it got a 10-bit video? Has it got 422? Has it, uh, oh, 4K60? Does it, does it, you know, does it have this or that? It really does it matter for a vlog? Uh, I think for a vlog is, or, or any kind of content, it's just as long as the the content is quality content, then I don't think it matters too much. You Exactly. As long as it doesn't look like total crap shot on some ninety nine dollar camera from Amazon, um, then it, then it's fine. But I mean, I the Barbie camera. What was the Barbie camera? Did you do that one with Philip Bloom? Yes. Yeah. I mean, okay, that does look like crap. But no, I mean, I I, I don't bother shooting log a lot of the time because it just takes. I'm, I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm very good at cut, uh, grading color correcting so it's just easier to have a baked in look sometimes yeah i mean sony has the s cinetone profile which is a great straight eye camera profile canon uh with the c70 which i'm I'm not sure if you're still shooting on that one kai Mm -hmm. i i think you still have one right but they do have one did you sell it did you get rid of it no still got it okay yeah i i've messed around with there's a um what is it called? Is it called Canon 709 or something? Or yeah. I forget what they call it, but, or like, uh, no, like 709 is Panasonic. I don't remember, but it's a nice baked in profile. Panasonic has nice baked in profiles now with the real time LUT that you can apply yeah. in there. Um, so a lot of people don't know this, but I think it, it's important to understand how to expose and how to shoot baked in. I think there's nothing wrong with it, especially if you're trying to just turn something around really quick. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, okay, going back to do, do people really need a ZV-1 2 when you've got the, your phones? Yeah. I think for TikTokers and, and people who, who are all about Instagram reels, I think for a lot of them, they, they don't need it. They, for them, it doesn't make sense anyway. If they want something, they're, they're going to buy a bigger fancy camera because it looks quite obviously and shoots quite obviously better footage than a than a phone. So yeah, I I think it's not right. going to be that popular because it's still got this problem of okay, I've shot it. It's on my camera. It's on the SD card. Now how do I upload it? It's not that quick. It's not. I think if yeah it's, for these kind of cameras, they really need to have some kind of better connectivity. Whether it be okay, it's got uh, a you know Wi Fi or uh, you know, it's got some kind of cellular yeah. kind of it needs a chip in it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've I've kind of wondered why don't we see Android, especially on Sony? I mean, Sony makes they yeah. make phones. They literally make phones. Why don't we see a stripped down version of Android with the App Store with Instagram built in? I know that sounds ridiculous, but wouldn't it be fantastic to have uh five G, you know, and sure you have to pay a cellular company to get the service, but so be it. You have a Sony camera with 5G uh, built in. You can do live streaming straight off of the camera and you can upload to Instagram and Twitter mm-hmm. and YouTube. Live streaming right from... off the camera would be crazy. That'd be cool. Yeah. I mean, they're obviously kind of doing it now with with their phones. They've got the ability to do that with the Xperia line. Sure. Um, but I just think it'd be so cool to have all that built in and I'd pay extra for it. I mean, that's a totally. cool feature. Totally. I mean, DJI can make a controller which is basically an Android phone. So Sony has got all the devices there, all the parts. But it, as you said, it, it takes years. I think before the ZV-1 was announced, I think it was 2019, I spoke to um, somebody from Sony Japan. Uh, apparently, they're 
they they were you know they make those compact cameras and he asked me what would be great for a vlogging camera and i said a wider lens better stabilization and then next year what they release they released the z1 which doesn't have a wider lens than 24 i said i said 24 is not wide enough so it, you know how was it four years four years later now we have a wide lens in a compact camera so maybe i don't know there, there's a lot of board meetings and oh will it work will it work how much is it going to cost and then they figure out yes okay yeah people keep complaining so it's probably the same with putting yeah. an android phone inside a camera it's going to take mm-hmm. years of boardroom meetings to to, to kind of <laughs> knock it out. The ZV, if the ZV one two with Mark two, which yeah. just came out, if that actually had good stabilization and still maintained a wide angle eighteen millimeter on the wide end, even without you know, obviously that you can do the digital stabilization and it'll crop in a little bit, but with just the standard built in stabilization, if it was actually good. Would you change your mind about it and and actually I say, so. I, you know, this I is think the one to I get? Think it's, I think it's as perfect as we're going to get right now for this for this type of camera. It isn't yeah. completely perfect. It's not like it's not like full frame. It's not. It's not got the best stabilization. But what was the choice? It's it's mm-hmm. perfect for. <laughs> it's perfect because there's no other choice. Canon came. Out with yeah. V10, Can- and it's almost like, well, Canon could have done the ZV12, and then I think they, mm-hmm. that would be quite successful. But instead, they came out with a ZV1 of F competitor, which I, I don't know, kind of doesn't make sense. Yeah, are you talking about? Are you talking about? And Connor, have you seen this? The little um, R100. It looks like a no. The the Canon is it V10? Yeah, okay. it's like a little flip camera. Yeah. It looks like a little flip uh, <laughs> camera oh, wait a from the old days. Oh my gosh, it does look like a flip camera. Yeah, that's hilarious. I've- but I saw, I was a little curious. Uh, so I saw that announcement, and then Kai, you did a, re- a review on it, and um, I was kind of thinking in my head, I was like, that is, you know, if they hilarious. put a good sensor on it with a good zoom lens with phase detect, you know, Canon dual pixel autofocus. This could be really cool. This I, I kind of like the idea of this size and this form factor. If it was like a ZV-1 or or especially like the ZV-1 Mark II with a wide angle lens, that would be great. And nope, just a built-in lens, contrast-based autofocus. <laughs> like it's, are we done with all these vlog cameras now, Kai? Are we, are we going to be seeing any more of these little vlog cameras from... I've, technically, you know, are, we're not done because Fujifilm released a camera with a literal vlog setting on the top of their camera. Did you guys see that? It literally says vlog when you turn yeah. the dial. You're talking about the, the S20? Yeah, the S20. It, it, I was like, oh, wow. Like, it's very subtle. Just vlog, V-L-O-G written right on the top. <laughs> vlog mode yeah what's cool about the s20 is it's kind of giving you a lot of the features from the xh2s if you look under the hood this thing can do 6k open gate which no. is yeah. kind of nuts it's actually kind of a dope camera for the price 1300 bucks with the with the open gate it, it's got the xt4 sensor in it which is a beautiful sensor i, I like yeah. that sensor uh with the faster processor uh it's honestly a pretty solid camera from what i can and tell you could put the f- and you could put the fan on it too yeah, it's a it's a vlogging camera that isn't patronizing to the potential customers. It's not like oh, let's it's a little vlogging camera. It's got a flippy screen. It's got a, a little a defocus control, um, but it's really actually quite rubbish. Um, no, it's a, it's a fantastic looking camera, um, specs wise. Yeah, did you get your hands on that, or are you going to no, get one? Sent yeah, to you? I hope hopefully I I can get get hands on one, but I've I've not tried it yet. We haven't really seen Panasonic's response to all this. Um, I would imagine that they're going to maybe do something in a budget-friendly micro four-thirds world mm-hmm. with this phase detect. Please, uh, please don't, Panasonic. It, they messed up last time. They released a... Well, I can't even remember what it's called. <laughs> yeah. It's such a heavy crop on it. I don't know. You know, it's kind of pointy. I know, that was the worst. <laughs> just Was it the G, G something... You know, just just send S five two owners a little sticker that says vlog on it, and then put that on the back. It's a vlogging <laughs> camera. Put it, put the S five two now vlog camera. The S five two S five two X. That's that's one of the best vlogging cameras you can get. It is, yeah. It really I'm is. Using it right now as my webcam, and I've noticed Kai is using his in all of your shoots. Is is that his primary yeah, camera? Is that I, your primary right now? 
Yeah, I mean, Locke uses Locke has been using Panasonic for a while, so I, I use uh, Panasonic just so we can match things up, basically. With with your uh, workflow and the way that you guys go out into the street and you do a lot of talking heads while you're kind of in action, how have you found you know not only the the stabilization but of course the autofocus performance in your professional YouTube use case? Well, let's let's put it this way. You know Dan Dan Chong. He said he of course, yeah. he said he, I love he's, Dan. he's been watching Locke's videos recently, and he can't get used to the fact that they're in focus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that that says it all because he was using uh, what the uh, yeah he's using the original S five and now he's using the S five two which is it it works I, it's still not perfect but I think I would take this with the really good stabilization and just kind of live with the focus that is not yeah sometimes not sometimes not the quickest and sometimes you you wonder whether it's asleep. But um, mostly it works. What lenses are you using on it? Do you have the 24 to 70 or the 16 to 35? Are you just using primes? What do you like? I like using the 18 millimeter, uh, the 1.8. It's been an hour and I really appreciate your time. I want to just ask from a kind of nerdy YouTube perspective, what's I've, I think I've asked you this every time you've come on. What's your current kind of state? Uh, you've been on the platform for a long time. You're considered one of the OG reviewers, if not the original. Um, and I, I can't express enough how much uh, joy it brings me to know that I'm that, I, <laughs> that you're on the show because I've been watching your stuff forever. Um, and I love your sense of humor. You haven't really even changed for 15 years, which is amazing that you've stayed so authentic this entire time. Um, What's your current state on YouTube? Or he's YouTube been right lying now? this whole entire time. Yeah, that's what that's what well that's what people yeah. say when they 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 meet somebody that they that they haven't liked for so many years. It's like you're still the same, aren't you? You are. Oh, you, <laughs> you, you haven't changed, changed a bit. <laughs> you asshole. Um, no, I'm just curious. Like, obviously, YouTube YouTube is a a job. I mean, it looks like a lot of fun, and it is a lot of fun. But then there is kind of the nerdy you know, analytics and thumbnails and titles and sponsorships yeah. and reviewing stuff. I mean, you just posted a ton of reviews this week. Like what's kind of your current state? Cause uh, you've had moments of burnout. You've had yeah. moments of loving it. Like, do you like it? Do you not like it? Are you upset? Is there anything that you want to change? I, I like it. I like making videos. I like making videos that I like watching. Um, yeah. I mean, we, we talked about burnout and just having that, sort of uh not having that creator spark and not feeling it and i i kind i kind of i think for a long time i i find myself just uh making videos and then just posting it and back back a while ago i can't remember maybe it must be a couple of years i used to just post a video and then tweet it and then instagram it and i, I used to be like so proud of it that i want to you know tell the world about my video for a long time, I've just been posting it and then just letting, letting you know, if people want to find a video, people, people can find it and watch it, which is which is not good because, you know, as you said, it's a job. You, it, it works on being, uh, getting the views and then, of course, you have to have sponsorships and things like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting back into it. I, I kind of, you know, I enjoy shooting with Locke. I shoot, I enjoy shooting with Dan. I, I enjoy being around people. And I think that's that's one thing with with making videos by myself. At first, it was cool. It was it was amazing to be trying to be creative with just just by myself. But I, th I think I'm craving. I'm just craving human contact. I love it when we're we're having those events like in in Japan and just meeting people. I like I like talking to people and interacting people or going to shows. I'd love to go to more shows because uh, yeah, they're fantastic. It's, there's so much so much to so much content that you can make from just being around other people and i didn't actually answer your question yeah no you totally answered i think um when we did kinotika and stuff that was really we got into a good rhythm and mm -hmm. connor you're now you've you've taken over that main channel what's you know you were sharing with me some of those same um you know feelings of like being on your own it is it is tough sometimes yeah yeah i i was i was telling you that i i would love to 
figure out how to not do it so by myself all the time um just because it is it's very isolating or it can be isolating uh and uh, you know making videos and talking about this stuff or whatever is just much more uh entertaining with other people and then also i feel like it just improves the content because you get more ideas or people have different perspectives which is always unique and interesting to incorporate into your videos and I don't know. Yeah. Making, making videos by yourself is just, it's just not, it's just not it. I got to figure out how to not do this. So solo. Myself. Yeah. It's, it, it's tough because, um, you know, when you're going solo, you have to, well, for me, I have to kind of make sure I'm, uh, I know what I'm going to say, script it a bit more than say, if I'm filming with Locke and it's just off the cuff, just talking and everything is just ad lib. Uh, yeah, digital web videos, most of the time it's just, okay, they're, they're the specs, let's go out and then just go along with it. And it just works. It's because you're talking to, you know, the locks there. It's like I'm talking, talking to the people watching. It's, it's just like we're having a little chat. When you, when, when you're by yourself, you know, ultimately you're talking to a camera. It's, it's a bit, you have to you have to pick up your enthusiasm. You have to be more energetic when you're by yourself, almost in a really unreal way. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You yeah, know, I'm I don't think I'm a very like yeah let's let's do this yeah woohoo. I'm not not that kind of person. So I think it's it's more it's difficult for somebody with such a dry drab voice to make a video interesting I, I wish i was american i wish i was more positive like you americans you wish you were american yeah oh no Hell we, yeah. We, you'd just be another one of us then it wouldn't be as interesting all all us americans are like man i wish i had a british accent because immediately <laughs> you're more interesting just just yeah. like that <laughs> i know like that. and then no, i think and then when they see a, an asian with a, a, a british accent it's like what now i've seen everything and then da- and then Dan comes on as well, and you're like two, <laughs> <laughs> two of them. Da- Dan, it's just My amazing having blowing. Dan on, uh, just because there's you can't script somebody like that. He's just that's him. I know. He's, he's just funny. It. He's so off the cuff. He's unhinged. He just <laughs> yeah. gets so upset about something that is hysterical. I love it. I love that you've included him in the content. I- I still want to attend the show with Dan there because it's going to be tiring, but it's going to be yeah. funny as hell. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. No, I, I I love kind of the direction your content has, has taken over the last two years where it does feel like it, you're still posting the videos at this, you know, at the same time as everybody else. Uh, yeah. But I know that when I, I know that when I watch your video, it's going to be uniquely Kai and I'm just going to be hanging out with you and Locke and Dan and whoever else. And yes, you'll, you'll talk about some of the features and whatever, but you may discover something along your little journey and, and maybe share a little piece of information that nobody else is talking about because you're actually out shooting it. You're getting the perspective of other people. You may go to a camera shop and, and look at some vintage lenses along with the review and so it's just it's just more entertaining and and I think it's a a great like if we're going to talk about strategy it's a good strategy in a way I know you're not doing it for that reason necessarily but it makes me just want to watch all the Kai videos be, regardless of the of the content because I know I'm just going to be hanging out with my friends essentially is what it feels like well thank you for the kind words um but yeah I think for a long time I've been on autopilot it's just been uh you know just do it in this way because that's how i've been doing it um i look back sometimes i think oh i could have done it better or you know i want that to come back oh it's just a lot of times i'm just always find like i'm doing it last minute and uh, i'd say that you know a lot of focus is on family life at the minute so you know kids kids stuff and um you know i I enjoy that i enjoy that so uh, i'm i'm kind of happy in that sense that you know i I get to spend so much time with them because you know they're young and um only happiness once don't want any more kids so uh might as well spend time with them while these ones are young but yeah at the same time i do want (laughs) to 
want to do the YouTube thing still, and I want it to be interesting and original and creative. So it's just finding that balance. Do you feel like it's last minute because of the fact that it's just like, you know, you have to get it out at the same time as everyone else. It's always a race to get things out first. So there's always that little bit of pressure and you don't have the time to make things as creative or interesting or more well thought out as you'd like. Yeah, that and you just I mean? really shit um, time management probably. Um, it it doesn't help. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, me too. I'm the same way. Really? So. <laughs> you know... Lock is lock 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 is probably worse though. That that's the thing. I I don't know what your. I mean, who who edits your videos? Who me? I don't post videos anymore. So <laughs> Connor is Con, without Connor, I wouldn't have been able to stay uh, regimented with what I was doing because Connor has the ability to sit down, do the work, and get it done on time. Whereas I think I wait until the last yeah. minute. And then I feel that energy and that kind of like, oh, shoot, this thing has to be done tomorrow and it's 10 o'clock at night, so I better get started. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, and, and that energy and that kind of focus creates a hyper super focus and I'm able to get it done in five, six hours from 10 p.m. until 5 a.m. the next morning. Yeah. But then... It affects my marriage. It affects my mood with my children. I get angry. I get, you know, just depressed. Um, also, I'm learning more. I don't know if you saw Sarah Dietschy's latest video where she really shared some of the things she's learned about ADHD, but I think definitely this is a symptom of technically ADHD is because Sarah struggles with this. A lot of other people I've heard struggle with it as well. And ADHD isn't a bad thing. It's just, I think it's good to almost recognize that so that you have the awareness of it and you can maybe manage it, but I'm still learning all that. But um, I've always operated this way, which is why I love YouTube because the high pressure quick turnaround kind of works well for that. <laughs> but in turn, it's also not healthy as a, yeah. as a father and a husband and a friend and stuff like that. So, yeah. So do you enjoy the, the, the pressure? Yeah, I, I actually really enjoy it. <laughs> Does it? Do you? You work it's, better under pressure. Absolutely. Yeah. No, he only works under pressure. There's a distinct difference. <laughs> when the pressure happens, then he works. Right. No, that's that's totally accurate. I've, I've only, I really only work under pressure. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and uh, I'm being a little sarcastic. Obviously, you do work outside of pressure, but. It is when you well, that's why I've always, as a freelancer, I've always enjoyed doing shoots rather than edits because if you just show up for a day to shoot a wedding or whatever, you, j you just do your work and you go home and then you get paid and I don't have to deliver anything I already did. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, I think it's just, you know, recognizing, but I, I do like editing a lot and, and, you know, I think I'm pretty good at it, but like, it's just only something that I can <laughs> do at the last minute. Yeah. I don't know. It's the same for me. I I I enjoy the pressure of okay. It's it's got to be done. The 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 embargo is going to be lifted soon. Everybody's going to have their videos out, and I'm going to be late. I'm going to be late. I've got to I've got to get it done. Love it. Con is shaking his <laughs> yeah, head. He's like, too. no, these think, two two yeah. losers. No. no. <laughs> No, I, that's not what I'm thinking. I, for me, that's it's 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 not enjoyment. It's it's. Can I have Connor? Uh, sure, I'll fly to London. And work with you. <laughs> yeah, that that gives me so much stress and anxiety. Like when there's the last secondness of things, or you know, it's like the pressure. I, I want to have it done well before, because then inevitably there's mistakes or something, and you want to have time to correct those as well. And you don't when you do things last second and then things just go up and it's like, well, I just have to live with those mistakes. One of the things I learned about ADHD that is different from other like non ADHD people too, is like, obviously not everybody likes doing hard things, you know, like doing their taxes or the bills or all those types of things. But the, the difference between a normal person and a person with ADHD is 
a normal person will still do it. Even if they wait to the last minute, they still get it done. But a person with ADHD will put it off uh, to a point where they actually can maybe even get into trouble. They got to pay a fee or they get fired from their job or, you know, you're l- late on a sponsored video yeah. and you have to apologize to the brand. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> those are things that I've faced in my life. And I'm now that I'm starting to learn more about it, I'm not on medication. I don't know if I should be or, or will be on medication, but I think it's important to maybe start for me to start learning these things to be aware of it so I could start to manage it. For example, this week I had to finish a big edit and I hired Connor to help me. And by having Connor sit next to me, I actually was on task and I did my job by having him there. And he helped get this project done way faster than I could have done it. So I, th- I think know. it is good fun. to reach out to, to people when I think when, you know, whether the shit hits the fan or you're you're in trouble is is a lonely profession to have YouTube, and sometimes if you know people, mm-hmm. just reach out and and even if they're not going to help, just you know talk to them and, and get some get some uh, advice or just uh, understanding. It really helps in this uh, this this kind of. There's, there's not many. I think especially a lot of YouTubey people can be quite. I don't know. Oh, you're, oh, that's how many sub- subs you've got. I'm not going to, I'm going to smile or talk to you for a bit, uh, but I, we're not friends. We're not friends. Um, you're not in the, <laughs> you're not in the, well, that's how you treated me for a while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you true. mean? What was the, you had a certain sub count. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I, no, I, we met at Photo Kino, yeah. the last one ever, man. Yeah. I, you know, that's Dan cool. introduced us. Yeah. Dan is the connector of people. Yep. That's why he's so fantastic. He'll just say, oh, yeah, I love oh, Dan. He, you need to talk to this guy. Uh, I think yeah. I probably, yeah, exactly. probably made some rude, rude jokes about a pink lens. And then, um, yeah. So oh, yeah, to... the pink lens. That was right. <laughs> yeah. With a kip on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they were that was great cool. Times. And then Andrew Reed, we got to... Uh, that was good times, man. Yeah. Yeah. May, may Photokina rest in peace. I Maybe know. it'll come back one day. We should just well, yeah. start our own. I think you're right. It's it's important for other creators, whether you're a YouTuber or not, even if you're just a, a filmmaker or photographer, just anybody in this creative field. I think it's helpful to have other friends alongside doing the same thing to kind of air out your grievances. Yeah. Is that a saying? Yeah. yeah. That's it, right? Sure. Because I'm really uh, bad at reaching out. I, yeah, because it helps. And, and, you know, I, I appreciate it that you, you, you sometimes message me um, and we've, we've chatted a few times and... I, I'm bad at doing that. I'm. I always think, uh, you know, did anyone talk to me? Um, I won't bother. I won't bother. Um, but it's it's great <laughs> when you do talk to people who are also creators, uh, YouTubers, and you you start talking about things and you you start relating on uh, the the whole the issues of of being a, a YouTuber, creator, whatever you want to call it. It's great. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I. I talk to my wife about it and her eyes just glaze over. So. Yeah, I, I mean, of course, the, you know, your other half is always going to be understanding, but, you know, they, they don't, they don't do that whole thing of. Yeah. Uh, she doesn't even watch YouTube. She's, she's a Facebook video watcher. Wow. Uh, really? Crazy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of women watch Facebook and Instagram reels, obviously, too. So I believe it based on my, uh, What's the analytics where it's like ninety seven percent male? YouTube. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. YouTube but, is a male, uh, a very male, but especially photography in general. Yeah, especially photography as well. And, yeah, and cameras <laughs> very much so. I mean, yeah. I, I, I think don't want to shifting a bit. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, sometimes I feel is like, it? oh, sh- <laughs> should I say it's a, it's very male or male orientated? It, it is. I mean, let's just face it. We we're, we're nerds. Most nerds. A male. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, most weird people are guys. Yep, it's true. That's not to say that there's not amazing, you know, women out there who, who are as well, like Justine and Jenna and Sarah and mm-hmm. Kitty yeah. and all, you know, Valentina, all these people. They're wonderful, talented people um, that are women. But yeah. that, that it is it is rare. <laughs> so, Which makes it special. Which makes it special and awesome. There you go. Actually. Well, on that note, <laughs> Kai, 
thank you so much for joining us so last minute and for talking about all these nerdy cameras. Are you going to buy a Leica Q3? That's kind of the last question. I'm not made of money. Oh, you, yeah. you, you buy it. That's the guy with the Supreme stuff everywhere. Yeah, it's literally on a Supreme <laughs> mic right now. I, I don't have any money. <laughs> it, do, it doesn't. It's back, it's back you to front. This microphone. <laughs> it's back to front. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It's, it's a right. fake one. And my Adidas is back to front as well. So yeah. even that is fake. But se- seriously, you, you've been what's talking the, about. I mean, it's back to front. You, you've been talking about buying a Leica for ages. When are you going to finally buy a Leica, <laughs> Dave? It's I like think Dave just Japan, likes talking even about before buying Japan. one. Yeah, and there's, he doesn't talk about buying any other cameras. Yeah. It's just Leica, Leica this, no. Leica that. Like he messages me and, and, and asks, oh, what about this Leica? Is this Leica good? Uh, what do you think of this? Uh, oh, you should, you should and, sell your C70, buy a Leica so that you can own one so that you can decide this isn't worth it and then sell that and then buy a C70. <laughs> Dave, the cool th- just do the cool whatever it takes. The thing about Leicas, though, is they do hold their value. Yeah, yeah. do yeah, whatever do it. it takes. You know, I have a bunch of crap in this garage. Sell your sell. C70, sell your ga- gar- garage, sell your, you know, sell your, your plants <laughs> in the background, jizz in a pot and sell, it, sell that. Uh, I'm sure they still um, pay money for that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and maybe have your body used as some kind of um, testing, testing, what, what do you call it? For science. Scientific <laughs> scientific research. Have your body for scientific sure. research. <laughs> Just do whatever it takes. Make Absolutely. it work, Dave. I don't want to, I don't want to hear another, me- okay, I don't want to hear from you again asking, do, should I buy this like it? Just buy one, all right? <laughs> buy the Q3. <laughs> You've already messaged me. What would you say? Oh, the Q3 it. looks great. I'm gonna, I want to buy one. What do you say? It does. It has everything I want in it. Yeah. Yeah. So just buy it. Day. 28's my favorite uh, focal right. length. My only problem with the Q3 is that you can't stick a film roll into it. But besides that, it's great. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. Buy the Q3 or buy an M6 now at this point. Yeah. yeah. You can buy a new M6. Well, Kai, thanks for coming on. That's all right. You're the best. Wow. Well,